Well, let me ask you this then. If it wasn't you, who else was it? I don't know. I don't know. You've, have you got any theories? No. I don't know. I, I, I don't know, man. I truly don't know. The, the problem I have, Lorenzo, is that you go from being this charming, well-spoken, polite man to somebody very different very quickly. American serial killer, a former trash company supervisor, Gillard is considered to have raped and murdered 13 women and girls in a period spanning from 1977 to 1993. He was convicted of six counts of murder on March 16, 2007. Most, if not all, the victims were prostitutes. All were found shoeless and dumped in secluded spots around Kansas City. Most had cloth or paper towels stuffed into their mouths and marks around their necks. Gaylord had previously served time for child molestation. Probation records showed that from 1969 to 1974, he was suspected of fire rates but was never convicted. Gaylord became a suspect in 1987 in the murder of Shelia Ingold, a crime lab later linked all victims to one killer using DNA testing. A blood sample Gaylord provided in the 1987 investigation led to the murder charges. She was a young girl who was lost. Easter 1977 was the last time her parents had seen Stacy L. Swafford. She was 17 years old. She had left home several months before and was living on the streets of Kansas City as a prostitute. She also died on the streets as a prostitute. Her body was found April 17, 1977, face down in a vacant lot near 45th Street and Euclid Avenue. A autopsy was performed and it was determined that Ms. Swafford's cause of death was strangulation. Her mother, Georgine Swafford, was inconsolable after her daughter's death and died at the home in 1994 of acute alcohol poisoning. She was at peace with her death, knowing she would see her daughter in heaven. Of the dozen women Gilead is charged with killing, Gwendoline Kazine was the youngest. She was 15 when her body, with wire wrapped around her neck and wrists, clothed but without shoes, was found January 23, 1980, against a building behind 1312, the patio by a neighbor leaving for work. An autopsy revealed that the cause of death was strangulation. At the time of the investigation, it was revealed that Kazim was working as a prostitute on Shrews Avenue. Her father had reported her missing just one day before, despite the fact he hadn't seen her in more than a week. Not much is known about Margaret June Miller, who was 17 when her body was found in a field near 37th Street and Garfield Avenue on a Sunday afternoon on May 9th, 1982, by a teenage student walking to his grandmother's house. Police reports that indicate her underwear and bra with a key attached were not recovered. It was revealed that Miller was working as a prostitute on Struis Avenue. A autopsy was conducted and it was revealed that the cause of death was strangulation. Catherine Berry gave up hope, but she never gave up faith. After slipping into mental illness, which family members believe which was hereditary, following the birth of her third child, Barry descended into life on Kansas City down street streets, downtown streets. Barry was a loving mother and full of life until her breakdown. She spent nights in homeless shelters. It was learned that, that Miss Barry was not a prostitute, but was mentally ill and would walk the streets. She would walk the streets and accept rides from strangers. Barry bodies was found March 14th, 1986, at an abandoned public works behind with a nylon stocking around her neck, covered with leaves near 13th and Central Streets. A autopsy was conducted and it was revealed the cause of death was strangulation. Naomi Kelly was 23 single mother of two when she was strangled on august 16 1986 and her body dumped into a seedy downtown kansas city park she was found with a towel tied around her neck and face she was found by a man drinking liquor at the park a task was conducted and the cause of death was revealed to be strangulation investigation revealed that the victim worked as a prostitute on Shrews Avenue. She was attending a business school in downtown Kansas City. She was taking business courses and trying to better her life for herself with two children. Blevins was 32 and she was strangled on her body, dumped in bushes in front of the Hyde Park Christian Church at 38th and Wyandot Streets. Very quickly. And so, so you go to somebody that I could imagine if he was angry and he was pushed enough could be very dangerous. Okay, so what, 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 what these women have made me angry or pushed enough to do to make me hurt them? You tell me. I, I'm asking you. I, they couldn't have done nothing. They couldn't have done nothing. Did they disrespect you? 
I don't know how they I don't, I don't know how they could have disrespect me. I didn't know him. Ann Barnes' body was found April 17, 1987, by a passing pedestrian. She was lying on her back near downtown Kansas City, 10 years to the day after Gilliard's first alleged victim was found. A autopsy was conducted, and which, which revealed that the cause of death was strangulation. Barnes was a housekeeper at St. Mary's Hospital when it was located on Main Street. She was an exotic dancer at an establishment further south on Maine. She was also a prostitute. Two years after she graduated from high school, Kellyanne Ford was dead, strangled, and abandoned in Kansas City's Roanoke Park. A woman walking her dog found Ford's body at the foot of a bluff on June 9, 1987. She was nude except for a wide sock on her right foot. She had a silver cross earring in her left ear and needle marks in her left arm. A autopsy revealed that the cause of death was strangulation. Investigation revealed that Miss Ford worked as a prostitute on Main Street. She was born in Warrensburg, Missouri and had lived there until she moved to Kansas City in 1985. The year she graduated from the Warrensburg High School, she was a Methodist. Her socks and shoes were the only clothing missing when Angela M. Mayu's body was found September 12, 1987 by a passing motorist. She was found face down on the side of the road at 26 and Genesis Streets. The cause of death was ruled to be strangulation. Investigation revealed that Miss In Gold worked as a prostitute on Shoes Avenue. Here's where a card from her turquoise sweater, which police later used to connect her death to others. She was wearing gray slacks. She was also wearing a gold ring on her left pinky and a silver wedding ring with a fake diamond on her her right finger. Both rings were gone when Shirley and Gold body was found November 3rd, 1987, inside a van outside a auto repair shop on 374 Streets Avenue by someone interested in buying the van. The cause of death was ruled to be strangulation after a topsy was conducted. Investigation revealed that Miss Engel worked as a prostitute on Streets Avenue. The body of Carmeline Hibbs was found in a second-story parking lot at 3560 Broadway on December 19, 1987 by a motorist. She was clothed but missing her shoes. A topsy revealed that her cause of death was due to strangulation. Hibbs worked as a prostitute on Main Street. Luther's body was found lying on snow drift. She was found by a passing motorist. She had shoestring tied on her neck at 25th Street and Allen Terrence. A autopsy conducted and the cause of death was listed as strangulation. Investigation revealed that Miss Luther worked as a prostitute on Main Street. Luther was among five children being raised by a single mother who did the best that she could. Their mother died the year before Luther was found murdered. She attended Miller Byrne Jr. High School, now at Enoch Middle School in Overland Park, but never made it to high school. Just truly really don't know. And what was your defense in court? I truly don't know. I was just there. You have no idea what your defense was? No. I read, I you read were it. You were charged with killing 13 women by strangulation, and you have no idea what your defense was. Do you think I'm an idiot, Lorenzo? Do I look an idiot to you? Can I go back? Have a good day, y'all. Thank you.